one and we're live what is up everybody brad modrich coming at you like i said i would today i have a very 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 special guest on the show today and uh, i want to pump the brakes real quick my son's home everybody knows how i start these things off but that does not mean that i'm not gonna give respect where respect's due First off, to all of our military personnel that are deployed all across the globe, please, God bless, stay safe. Thank you for putting your lives where you are to keep our civil freedoms and liberties uh, the way they are here at home. So first off, thank you to all military personnel. I want to give a big shout out. I know our police force um, is, is going through some crazy things right now. Our first responders, our EMT the ambulance drivers, the doctors, the medics, the people who are literally on the front end of all of the situations that are going on right now. And I'm not downplaying any side right now, but simply for the simple fact that there are people, men and women of all colors, race, color, creed, relations, whatever, that are putting themselves out there. I want to say thank you to those people who are doing good and who are doing people uh, the way that they should. So first and foremost, I want to thank everyone. Now, I want to talk to you about our guest. I've known this this man uh, since I was in elementary school. Uh, crazy, crazy long story. We actually used to walk home. Um, and I'm not going to give you the over a river through the woods. We walked five miles a day to get to school. But uh, this man has been in my life in some way, shape, or form since elementary school. And over the course of the past five, five years, the relationship has only gotten stronger. And again, when we talk about people that are part of your, your quote unquote, your tribe, this is one of the men that exudes positivity and putting your best foot forward um, from being a professional athlete, a professional basketball player, traveled all across the globe. And we have him here today, my good friend, my dear friend, um, I'm blessed to have this man in my life for, for so many different reasons. Y'all may know him. I'm sure you do. If you've seen the smile, you know who he is. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sammy Barona. How are you, my brother? I'm good, my brother, Brad, man. First and foremost, man, appreciate you having me on your show. Uh, it's truly a blessing, man, just to have my relationship with you, like you said, since childhood till now. I mean, I've been fortunate enough, man, to see your maturation, your evolution of everything that you've been from the beginning all the way up to now. And the one thing I admire about you most is every day you show the passion, the effort, the perseverance to become what you see yourself becoming. And you, you're an example of that. And, I, and I'm just thankful to have you in my corner and my family to, uh, to witness that. I appreciate that, brother. It means a lot. So let, let's get into it. You know, I put in the heading, you know, how you could be the best version of yourself. And when I talk about self-development, um, I mean, there, there's a lot of people in this space in self-development, people that are, you know, preaching positivity. And I, I couldn't have thought of a better person to have next to me preaching this because um, not only from your professional career as a, as a professional basketball player, and I'm going to let you kind of talk about it. And for those of you that are joining us today, Sammy, uh, in terms of the basketball industry, he has been making waves for years. And I'm going to let him tell you his story, not only on the court, but now transitioning into a trainer, uh, into a coach. Um, I always used to say this, there's, there's two kinds of basketball people, right? There's people who play basketball, and then there's a basketball player. Sammy's a basketball player. Like, this is his life, right? And everything in the core principles that he has as a man, he puts that into his game and his teachings, and this is why he's had the great success. So, Sammy, I'm going to let you kind of tell a little bit about um, you know, kind of how you started, where you transitioned, how you got to where you're at. I know you're you, you you're going to do this story much better than I will. So give us a little kind of a quick tutorial on who you are, where you came from, how you started. What do you got? So uh, originally, my my parents we we lived in New York, and my parents moved here to uh, Pennsylvania, and that was uh, strictly motivated for me and my sister, my sisters and I to um, have a better education. They wanted us to have private uh, private school teaching education. And uh, right away when we moved to Allentown, you know, I went to Our Lady Help of Christians. And ironically enough, uh, basketball wasn't a part of their program for years uh, prior. 
But the year that I got to my seventh grade year, uh, they just newly formed a team. And so um, that seventh and eighth grade year, I was able to find uh, a lot of early success in my development of playing basketball. And I was, you know, especially eighth grade year, I was averaging like 28, 30 points a game in CYO. And uh, our CYO team was a feeder system to the school that I was going to be going to, Central Catholic. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was at Our Lady. You were playing. Play, that was eighth grade Our Lady, right? Our Lady. Of the, the, the CY. Yeah. yeah. OK, go yeah. ahead. I just wanted to make sure yeah. I was right. Go ahead. And so uh, that summer, uh, I actually played baseball and football, too. And that summer, I went away to Dominican Republic to be in baseball school. So I missed the basketball summer league, summer league, which is kind of like, you know, the steps that you take even before uh, tryouts in the winter. You play the summer league so coaches can kind of see who's coming to our school and how good are they. So I wasn't able to do that, but um, I was very confident that once winter came that I was going to be able to demonstrate who I was as a player. Um, that summer, you know, like when you watch in eighth grade, you see a lot of after school specials. I remember coming home and seeing after school specials. And in those all those after school specials, I remember seeing that the kid that was very athletic that got the varsity jacket. Uh, would get a lot of attention from his peers and students, but also from the girls. So I couldn't wait to get to high school <laughs> because I was like, man, I'm going to go there. I'm going to get my varsity jacket. All these girls are going to love me. Man, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> and um, it's completely it's complete not how it went. <laughs> I got to the school. I had the same confidence, the same belief in myself. But um, the coaches uh, saw otherwise. And even though I could see vividly that there was five guys that are football players, few guys that uh, never played college basketball, for whatever reason, those are the guys that were picked. And I actually was not picked for the high school team. I got called in. And at that time, I thought I was going to be asked to maybe play JV. Um, but they actually were telling me that I wasn't going to be on the team. So you and just got rejected. Like, I just want to be clear. So you, you're, you're playing this, you're playing ball, and you're thinking, man, I, I did good. I'm going to get the call, put me in the game, coach. And you didn't even qualify. I'm not even qualified. They, they didn't even put you in there. Yeah. Wow. And, um, you know, we had, we had a lot of good athletes on that team. Some of my closest friends, you know, they were football players. But, you know, they were football players. But they were able to play ba basketball. But they weren't mm -hmm. basketball players. And so I was really confused. And, and I remember my good friend, Joey Bicker, he remembers, I, I was like, man, it's like, it's like a, a earthquake. I can't even believe this happened. But um, it, it, it was really unbelievable. And then even in my junior year, fast forwarding my junior year, a new coach had come and he actually uh, did service electric with uh, Mike Zambelli, whose name was Rich Basca. He was new to the program. I walked up to him junior year. I was six, five by now. And mm. I said, coach, I know you're new to the program, and I just want to know, do I have a legitimate chance to make the team if I come out? Because I'm like a wounded dog that doesn't even want to see if he's going to get wounded again. And uh, he said, he looked me dead in my eyes. He goes, no, we're good at your position. I said, oh, shoot. I said, okay. So I never played one second of high school basketball. And as we go forward and I talk about training, I take my kids to see kids that I train. When I walk in Rockney Hall, without question, literally a grown man, I want to cry, tear up because I feel that larceny, I was robbed of the opportunity to create history and make history there. Wow. Yeah. And, and for, for those of you that are watching, my, uh, my boy Anthony here, look, he just chimed in here. He's saying, believe in yourself no matter the adversity, right? Um, and, right. And, and it's hard, but. How did you at, at that age, because you don't I mean, you didn't have the mindset. I mean, the, the practicality of your mindset now. How did you handle that as junior in, in, in high school? You wanted to play. You wanted you wanted to do this. That was like a punch in the mouth. Oh, man. Uh, multiple times. And um, I was fortunate to have like some special people early in my life, like Tremaine Tatum was going through a similar thing, actually being part of Whitehall, who is very good. We looked at him like a Tim Hardaway. Mm -hmm. But Jermaine, I mean, and he knows I could say this because it's just facts, is that Jermaine was there at Whitehall to do one thing for four years, to hold the team ball every year. He was on the team every year to hold the team ball. And he was more than capable, more than able to be that type of player, but he was never given the opportunity. T Tremaine didn't play? Oh, he might have got a – you know, last seconds, minutes, but he never was the guy that uh -huh. was 
And Tremaine was a player. I mean, I'm telling you, this kid could play, but never was really given that opportunity. Right. I remember Ooh. watching him play at Peachtree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all the time. But boom, 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 boom. Like, nice. Yes. Oh, yeah. wow. So in that time, you know, you know, like, uh, I, I forget who's, who mentioned that about adversity, but adversity can either make you bitter or can fuel you to become better. And man, that adversity fueled me like no other to become better. And I didn't have any anyone really saying that you can, you will. Just an inner belief in myself to now I'm going to show and prove to the point that I actually took my high school pic. I mean, I took my high school yearbook. Mm -hmm. I didn't take the picture because I was so wounded, but I wrote down I will be a star because I just had so much in me that I had to prove and I wanted to prove. So it was like a blessing in disguise. The gift, the curse was a gift. Wow. Yeah. And, and, you know, fast forward, how does that play into your life now? Like you look back on it, does it still fuel you? Oh, every day, every day I feel motivated to create the narrative and manifest everything that I ever wanted to become and everything I ever wanted to be. And that translated from not playing a second of high school basketball, I became uh, I believe top three all-time leading scorers at L-Tri-C and the all-time leading rebounder and a Hall of Famer at L-Tri-C. And for a kid that never did anything, as soon as he gets to college, I was able to do that. And so kind of like it was in me the whole time. I just needed the opportunity. Mm. But um, as, as, as time progressed, you know, I went from L-Tri-C and then I actually ended up going to Kutztown. And that's where the greatest thing ever happened to me. I, I met... Well, two greatest things that ever happened. Uh, to me. Okay, that's where I thought you were going with that one. <laughs> yeah. Two greatest things that ever happened to me. But, but relative to basketball, the greatest right. thing that happened to me was meeting Coach Rick Nash mm. because he was the first, and I can't leave out Coach Edwards because he definitely was a, a part of my foundation. This is before high school. So mm. Coach uh, Edwards is definitely one of those pivotal people that had me involved in the game. But Coach Rick Nash, was the first was first person that said, you can and you will, and I believe in you, and we're going to do everything we need to do to get you to where you need to go. And to this day, my gratitude and my love and affinity for him is just, I can't even speak it in words how much he means to me and, and, and my career and what was able to happen for me in my life. You know, uh, as long as we've known each other, and as well as I know Coach, Nash, you hear you hear the story and the bits and the pieces, but it wasn't until right now that that really just kicked in. Why coach is such an important part of your life? I didn't realize he was the coach at Kutztown. Yes, I, I never made that connection. Right now, pieces just went together for me. Um, and what was the second best thing that ever happened to you? The second greatest thing that ever happened to me is the day that Coach Nash introduced me to my wife Bree. Woo! There it is. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and that and, and Bree's a Hall of Famer herself in basketball and softball. She played professional basketball in the WABA and she played in France and Switzerland. Mm. But we were able to come together and uh and have three beautiful children. And so like that those those are the two greatest things that happened to me at, at Kutztown. I love it. That's great. Yeah. So now let's fast forward. You you go to Kutztown, you hook up with coach you know, you kind of get some some different training. You got different mindset. You have someone actually believing in you. And the power of that right there, of having someone believe in you, because then it becomes more than you, right? right. It's I, I bet there was times you didn't want to let coach down. Like you would fight a little bit extra harder because you didn't want to let him down. You push a little bit harder because you didn't want to let him down. And that's such an important part because if you feel, for those of you that are out there, and this is hard, a lot of people are dealing with adversity right now. When you don't have people pouring into you positivity, love, appreciation, gratitude, knowledge, skill set, and you got to kind of do it on your own, I think the one thing that I can help people kind of realize what you did was even after the adversity that you dealt with in high school, you took it to L Tri C, you went to a community college that was voluntary on your part. You sought out for that. And you still didn't say, you know what? I didn't play ball in, in high school. 
ah, oh, man, they're not going to want me up here in college either. You pursued it, right? Yeah. You took that extra step. You stepped outside of your comfort zone. You knew in your mind what that vision was. Absolutely. And th this right here, this is one crucial part that I want everyone to understand. As long as you're making forward progress and you're taking steps, even it may take you a little bit longer, as long as you're taking those steps and you don't stop the forward progression, you're right. going to get there, right? Absolutely. And then, so that led you to Kutztown, graduated from KU, right? So graduated from KU, I got my degree in telecommunications to do broadcasting or color commentating. Mm -hmm. But I uh, coincidentally, my good, my teammate, Nehemiah Brazil, uh, hit, him and I were uh, in the gym just working out. And Coach Jones brought a French team over to, to be in the, um, in the camp. And okay. so while Pooch and I were working out, this guy named Roger Tonk was watching. And, you know, I don't even know who this guy is, just watching. So as we're working out, I guess we did a good enough workout that Roger Tonk was affiliated with a lot of team owners in France. And he said on the spot after the training was over, I want you guys to uh, come play in France. I can set that up for you guys. So it's like in life, you know, no matter where you're at, gym, anywhere, you know, right now, we don't know who's watching. We don't know who the people with influence power that can really change or affect our lives or influence our lives. You never know who's watching. So I, I feel that you should always do whatever you're doing to the best of your ability because you never know who's watching. You never know who's watching. And that's yeah. such an important part. And and you know what? This that that leads into character, I believe. Like I, I believe like a, a big part of that has to deal with character. Like what character is what happens when when no one's watching and you're still gonna proceed to do the things that you need to do and handle your business, right? Right. Such an important part of the process. So fast forward, you go overseas. Um, now I know, you know, just from knowing you as long as I've known you. An injury, you get an injury. Yeah, Probably so hands down, one of the worst things an athlete can think of—a competitive, hungry, aggressive athlete that wants to win, that wants to be in the game—you get an injury. Yes, more adversity in your life. Yes, one of the before I get to that injury, I do want to say I had a very—it was a blessed career of ten years, won two championships memories that I'll never forget and was able to enjoy with Brie as she came to visit me. But one day, the crazy thing about it was I didn't get injured and no knew that I got injured. I woke up. What do you mean? So it wasn't like an injury in a game where you got hurt and you're like, oh, ow, or something's wrong or what's going on. I literally woke up one day and said, man, my knee, something's not right with my knee. And I was like, you know, whatever, I'm going to just massage it, get ice, get to the trainer, stim, different things. Yep. Every time I would sit in the, in the taxi or the chauffeur that would take us to practice, I couldn't keep my knees bent because it was too painful in this one spot, a cute spot on my knee. So after they did everything, literally couldn't run. Either. Right. So I was bone on bone and I ran out. I mean, my cartilage, I wore thin. So I had congeal malaysia, I think, believes, believe it is. So that injury was literally the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And I didn't realize because I had to come home. I went to OAA and Dr. Palumbo said, oh, you have a slight uh, lateral, patella ten lateral patella tendon tear. Should be a uh, quick surgery, four to six week recovery. And I was like, great, I'm leaving for France in August. It's July, let's get it done. Went into that surgery. And when I came out, he's shaking his head. And he goes, we had to do microfracture surgery. Mm. And I, I didn't really know the weight of that. I was like, okay. I mean, I'm a competitor. I'm a battle back. I'm going to fight through this. No problem. Yeah, like never played again. No. That, that injury is so invasive. Like when they pull, drill the holes in your knee and the blood comes up and forms scar tissue to act as the cartilage, you atrophy so much that you can't really use your leg in the capacity that you were able to use it before. Wow. So, so that led to, uh, as I was doing rehab, a mother saw me and she walked up to me. She goes, are you a basketball player? I said, yeah. 
She goes, can you train my son? Mm. And that person, and you know who that person was? Oh. That's your relative. That's Chris Costas. Uh, no, Sue Costa. Yeah. yeah. Get out. Yeah. Wow. And that one person led to another, another kid, another kid, without me advertising or saying anything, they just kept advocating for me. And it just slowly but surely, exponentially, it just kept growing and branching off in different parts of the Lehigh Valley. And it's just been like, I would have never imagined. I never wanted to be a trainer. I never even thought about any of that. And to have that all unfold, really, as you look back and say, man, like God has a plan in everything. You know, a lot of times, God has a plan in everything. And, and a lot of times when one door closes, we get really upset and down about why, why is this happening to me? You know, why, what did I do? But a lot of times, if you just stay still and let go and let God, you'll see he'll take you to where he needs you. Not where you want to be, but where he needs you. Man, that's such good stuff today, bro. I, I can't even begin to tell you. And so there's so many people that need to hear that right now because there's so much adversity. There's so much uh, confusion. There's so many mixed signals. People don't under, understand how to uh, how, how to comprehend things right now. And it's not what you need. It's what he already has planned, right? Um, I, I can't even right. begin to tell you how much that resonates with me right now. And so many people need to hear this right now. Um, what, one of the, the main reasons why I wanted you on here and now fast forward, I mean, I could sit here and I could start counting numbers and numbers and people and, and young men and women who you, you physically, mentally, spiritually have changed these young men and women's lives. I mean, from high school age, hell, even to, to, to middle school, when you start training them to their high school, I mean, from the list goes on and I don't want to, you know, college, so yeah. yeah, I mean, the list goes on in terms of how much of an impact you had. Um, and a lot of it comes from your core principles. A lot of it comes from your ability to help reframe this right here and get people on track. And, and that's what I really want to touch base on because this is what people need right now. And if there's anyone that could uh, verbalize this in a way that you could speak to a, a broad spectrum of, of men and women, young and old, doesn't matter how old they are, what age they are, what what industry they in, this, this is going to resonate with everyone. So that's a mindset thing that you do. And, and it really comes down to a belief, right? Your belief system, you believe. And, and yo, this is why I wore this today. You know why I wore this today? You know why? I, I wore this. No, tell you, me, tell you, know, me. you know why I wore Muhammad Ali today? Muhammad Ali believed and said he was the greatest before he became the greatest. Yeah. He, he etched in stone when he was in Golden Glove boxing days, right? He used to say, I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest that ever did it. Before he was even at, got the accolades that he did. And that right there proves, and this is again why I, 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 it was so important to have you on, is to help just, I want you to touch base on this, this belief system, because there's so many limiting beliefs. And I, I don't know if you caught my live last night, it said, stop BSing, right? Yeah. And it, it was, it was, it has to do with the lies that you tell yourself, right? And, and these false innuendos, because you know, you didn't get the job you want. You didn't get the girl you want. You didn't make the money you want. Things went through and you start start building these, these, these handicaps, right? And then that handicap starts to paralysis. You, you start to get a little bit of paralysis and you don't make moves. You don't say what you wanted to say. Let's Absolutely. talk about that mindset because yes. you're great at this. I appreciate it. Uh, for me, I mean, everything starts and ends with my relationship with God. And I'm so thankful that one day, you know, I chose. I'm just so appreciative that he saw something in me that I didn't even tell. And that started with me really like, you know, uh, you're, you're an avid reader. I love to read as well. And when I was overseas, it gave me a lot of isolation. It gave me a lot of time to myself and a lot of time to really, you know, like I said, introspectively look on things in my life that were weak and could be better. And 
that Bible is different than all the books that we have ever read. That Bible is different than any other book because the words in the Bible are living organisms. There's so much power behind that word. And when you read those words, it's not something like you, you know, inhale knowledge and exhale wisdom. Those words get in your spirit and they just hold true and are alive for you on call at any time. So just for an example, like I don't, in our household, we don't say we're sick, even though we're all human, we can get sick. I say the opposite because when you have a problem and you speak the problem, I'm sick, you give that problem more life. Instead of saying I'm sick, I say by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. I believe in what I hope for, not what's happening to me. And so, you know, when we were growing up, say we that all had. Time. You believe, say that one more time. You believe in hope. Yeah, I believe more in the hope instead of what's happening to me, mm. you know. And um, like when we were kids, we would all get PlayStation, Sega, Dreamcast, Nintendo, uh, Atari, whichever one you want to pick. And all of those things came with what? A, a, a manual to how to play the game. And as everybody's out here living life, right, they don't realize that God gave us a manual. And that Bible, B-I-B-L-E, believer's instruction before leaving earth. Mm. He's given us everything we ever needed to navigate through this life, you know. And getting back to what you said about Muhammad Ali, how he would speak he's the greatest. That is a biblical principle that came in Genesis when God said, let there be light. And then there was light. He had to speak it first for it to become reality. And we all have that power. But if we don't understand, we're t I could, I could um, best correlate this to this. Let's say, Brad, you want a big screen TV. Best Buy has it, $7,000, high definition, 4, uh, 4K, I guess it's now, right? 1080p, 4K, best vivid picture you can get. You go to Best Buy, you pay $7,000 for it. You get home, you got the mount, you put the mount, you put the, the $7,000 TV on the mount. You plug the power into the to the wall, right? Yep. yep. Now turn on that TV, this beautiful seven thousand dollar TV. You turn on the TV. What are you going to see? Nothing. You're going to oh. see. Shh. You're right. You're right. You're going to see nothing but black and white. You got the mount. You got the TV. You got the power cord in. How come we ain't seeing the picture? Then plug the cable in. We didn't put that cable in. And all of us are that TV. All of us are that $7,000 TV. But it's not until that we plug that cord, plug that cable, and tighten it up that we're going to see the vivid picture of the life that we should, that we want to see. Some of us have it plugged in and we let it get loose. And we see the picture come in and out. But it's not until you tighten up that cable that you're going to see the life that you really want and wish for and hope for. And that's why I'm so thankful that this is way beyond me, that God literally by calling on him and allowing him in me, if people really would look inside themselves and stop looking out, they're doing this, they're doing that. Why this? Why that? Why do they do that if they're supposed to be this or that? Look at yourself and really see how you can make yourself better. And if you do that, by doing that, you just made the world better because you just made yourself better in the world. Imagine if everybody thought like this. Imagine that, man. Wow. That's that's almost like a mic drop moment right there, bro. That was powerful. We got some people joining in. I want to uh, to give them some recognition. This is my buddy Kyle Hutchinson. He's one of my Arate brothers. Uh, deep in his faith Kyle. right here. Kyle, Kyle's a great man. He's uh, been, been supporting me since day one, since I met him. Kyle, I appreciate you, brother. Uh, this is my little buddy. Uh, oh, you know this guy, Stephen Castillo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, what's up, big guy? Uh, this is my little buddy uh, Abram uh, down in, and he's down in Westchester. What's up, Abram? It's my little buddy. Um, what's Anthony got? Never worry about the ones that don't believe. You'll make your way, one hundred percent. Anthony's a good man. He's uh, he's a good man right there. And then what else do we got? Stephen telling you, know, you got to be a believer, man. Being a believer. Yes, sir. Um, there's no question at all about your, about your faith, where, where your core principles lay, right? A lot of people don't have that right now. A lot of people, uh, have not found that path towards God. A lot of people are not deep in their faith. A lot of people are so far away from that center how do you help? What, what, what's the message for them? Because this is 
this is something that, and as I'm looking, I, I see the people in the lineup. I know they're faith driven men and women that are on there. Um, some people don't have that change the narrative a little bit, right? Let's, let's kind of pinpoint on them yes. um, because a lot of people don't have this, this uh, understanding, right? Yes. Whether it's too big, whether they're not taking time for it. I mean, hell I'm, I'm, I'm guilty as charged, you know, with, with a lot of people not understanding how powerful this could be. Um, and more importantly, what it, what it's going to do for you when you serve from, from this platform, let's talk to the people who really don't have that, that understanding. How do you help them kind of get out of the trenches of mindset? Because they've been told no to the basketball team. They've been told no to their job for whatever reason. And again, I, I, I know it's sensitive time right now, and there's a lot of ways that people are going to try to pick apart and dig and mix. But the reality, and I've been saying this since day one, good, it's it's the it's the classic good versus evil right now. We are in that battle. This is a global battle of simplicity of just good versus evil. How do you help those people that don't have that mindset yet? What what what's a message that you would use for them? Because I know, you know, we we bought listen, we're two peas in a pod, bro. Um, we have a lot of this, the same social inner circle. Um, we have a lot of the people that we know could be doing more for themselves, but really aren't. What do you say for them? What's that message sound like? What I could say to them is that it's like you said, Brad, yourself and, and myself, man, we're not far from where they are. Uh, we definitely are not even close to where we want to be. Right. And that's the one thing that I truly love about having a relationship with God, because I know like growing up, man, there's so many, even to this day, there's so many things. If you're a fly on the wall, I'm far from perfect. Oh my goodness. Not even close. Far. But man, am I far from what I used to be? And that's what I'm thankful of. I'm thankful that I'm going in the right direction. Even though I'm nowhere near the, the, the mountaintop, man, am I going in the right direction? And there's so many things that I need to get better at and do better at and be better at. But I'm so thankful because God said, make me first and everything else will be added to you. A lot of people think if I just get that job, if I meet that person, if I just get to that situation, I will have a better life. God's saying, listen, make me first and everything else will be added to you. There's only one thing that God can do. And that's lie. If he said it, he meant it. But here's the other part. You got to believe it to receive it. And, and that's what I would tell these people to take that leap of faith. Because I remember my pastor, it was Tremaine's dad. He said, in his Southern voice, he said, <laughs> he said do you know that you know? That you know that you know. That if you was to die today, are you going to heaven? And I was like, man. That's a, that's a deep question. I know one thing. I'm not a bad person, never been. I don't want to hurt nobody. I don't want to do nothing wrong. You know what I mean? But I've always had the other side as a competitor, as, as, a, as a man, as a young man. I want to prove myself. I have pride. So when things will rise against me, I'm ready to let's whatever, whatever you want. Right. But getting back to what he said, do you know that you know that you know that you know if you was to die today, are you going home? Are you going to heaven? And I didn't have that answer. And I was like, but wait a minute, I don't want to be a fake. I don't want to go up to this church in front of this church. And I know, man, as soon as we get out of here, I got at least three girls. I'm already thinking about who I'm going to call. I already know maybe I want to drink tonight. I already know all these, all these different things in my life that I want to do. I can't go up there. And then right there in that moment, God spoke to my spirit and said, if I made all of this, all this trees, grass, earth, water, animals, people, don't you think I can make you into the likeness of me? Mm. And I said, God, well, I'm going to come to you just as I am. And if one step was girls, another step was drinking, another step was all the other things in my life that are bounding me and weighing me down, it didn't a magic wand me and all of a sudden it was gone from my life. To this day, there's still steps I'm walking down. But man, if I was walking up the steps going the wrong way, he took me down. Or better yet, if you reverse it, he took me up towards him. You know, he, he literally started to show me the things that I needed to wean out of my life to become to, to become more like him. Mm. How did you hold yourself accountable to make sure that you were going to do those things? 
that that that's something that's a daily that a daily battle, right? Um, every day, you know, I pray in the morning. I say, Lord, thank you for the day that you give me, and I ask you, Lord, to guide me, direct me, and lead me for your will and your purpose. Let me be salt and light to all that I come in contact with, because salt and light, if it's if it's the best steak or best Kool Aid, you put salt in it, you're gonna taste salt, and if it's the darkest room and you put a little ray of light in it, you're gonna see the light. And I say, Lord, let me be that. And so I'm thankful that uh, that he gave me those qualities. And so getting back to the question of what do I do, the things that are my weaknesses, mm -hmm. God says, be happy that you're weak because I'm here to give you the strength. Mm -hmm. Because if I didn't have him, I would be fighting those battles on my own. And when you're not anchored in him, you're like a leaf in the wind that can go any which way. But when you're anchored in him, when you want to go any which way, when that wind's blowing hard left, right, up, down, you just can't do it. Can't and do it. Man, brother Brad, you see me out. And my wife knows, and everybody knows, I've never been a cheater, never did nothing. But man, to see them out there is it, it, a challenge. I'm, 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 I want to I wanna see, I want to go. Can I look? <laughs> no, you can't do nothing. So you're anchored. I, you're and I'm, I'm anchored and I'm real. You know, I'll tell you real. Anybody knows me, I'm real. I'm not going to give you... I'm just like this, but I've never, I'm thankful that I've never really been able to pull that anchor away. I've never messed up in that way that it's unforgivable. That's right. That's, that's, that's good stuff, man. Hold on. we got some more people joining us. Brother Zach, you know, Zach, honestly, I yeah, love yeah, brother that. Zach, yes, sir. Yep. 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 Um, man, B boy, B boy, Zach. <laughs> B boy, Zach. Yo, he's got something good. Wait, I got him on next week. Wait till you see what we got going on. Wait, he's yeah, got going on. That boy can dance. He, yo, he's the original. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, ah, uh, oh, uh, uh, Tatum. No, the Tatum. Channing Tatum. He's oh. the original Channing Tatum. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I almost had him at 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 my. You were at my wedding. I almost had him come in and him and I talked about uh, doing a, a break dancing crew. Yeah, we bringing a break dancing thing, and I was going to do this at my wedding. This whole break dancing thing, but it never came to life. That's Zach, uh, Zach's working on something to uh, to help with some of the racism that's going on right now. And this was a project that he was working on a year ago. That's just finally coming to life right now. And you know this young lady, Miss oh, Anna. Miss Anna, thanks yeah. for joining, Anna. Appreciate you so much. Um, Brother Sammy, man, this this was great. I know this is going to resonate with a lot of people today. I know that this message needs to be heard. It needs to get out. So again, I'm just going to kind of dial this back into the people who are following, the people that are going to watch this on replay. If you know anybody that's in need of hearing this message, if you know anybody that's dealing with some adversity, got some self-doubt going on, um, aren't playing themselves up to the ability or the capabilities that you know they can, I want you to tag them in it. Share this if you can. If if you like what we're doing, the only thing that I ask, I don't get paid for this. I don't make money off of this. The only way that we can continue to lock arms as brothers and sisters is by spreading this word and getting this message out. And again, you put them blinders on and, and you know, maybe we could quick touch base on this. And, and I know that, you know what, we're going to save that. I'm going to leave that one right there for the next time, because we're going to do this often. Um, Sammy, you're definitely one of the guys I want to have back on here to continue this, this narrative, to continue this conversation. Uh, because you do it so well, you're a great speaker. Uh, and most importantly, your core values and your purpose is steadfast in a solid foundation that's unbreakable. And that's why I love being with you, brother. Um, yeah. If you don't mind. Please. And if I can end it, because what I love about your, you know, your baby conflict, all of us have a conflict in our life. We have one, we have two, we have many, right? And that conflict, I don't know, I have a lot of time, especially now in COVID, right? I have a lot of time to think. And I came up with this analogy. Anything that you're going through in your life, your A, B, C might be my D, E, F. It doesn't matter. We're all going through something. I equate it to this. You got a fish in a bowl right? And every day that little fish in the bowl, you decide on the first day that you get it, you're going to feed it 20 flakes. Mm -hmm. And that little fish comes up and comes up to the top of the water and it eats 20 flakes. The next day you say, you know what? I'm going to give it 10 flakes. Mm -hmm. Man, that's half. If you can get a little mind of the fish, it's like, why 10? But it goes up. It eats. The next day you say, you know what? I'm going to give it five. 
Fish has got to be thinking, what's going on? But five it is, it eats. The next day, you say, I'm going to give it one. What, if we got in the mind of the fish, that fish will probably think, man, what is this guy trying to do? What is he trying to do? Starve him. He's trying to starve him. He's trying to kill him, right? Mm -hmm. But it goes up. It eats. From the next day on, I decide I'm not going to give that fish any more food. What will happen to that fish? He's going to die. He's going to die. I bring all that to say this. Whatever you're going through in your life, no matter what it is, if you, even if you get better at it, 20 cigarettes to 10 to five to maybe one, as long as you feed it even once, you keep it alive. The only way to get rid of anything in your life is you have to starve it till it dies. Mm. Amen. <laughs> yes, mm. sir. Man, and it wouldn't even be right if I didn't do this. And re real quick, anyone, please look under Sammy's name. Uh, he's on Instagram. He's on Facebook. Uh, did you get a LinkedIn account up yet? You're, are you on LinkedIn? No, no LinkedIn. No, I'm looking so, 1980. So uh, check him out on Instagram. It's Barona Lab. I got his Instagram handle right underneath him. Look him up on Facebook. It's Sammy Barona. Look him up. Follow him. Uh, man, you're you're gonna you're gonna be following greatness. That's all I could say. And Appreciate that being said, normally I, I finish this off on you know you got to conquer your conflicts, but I think you did a great job on edifying that. You just got to starve it for you to be able to really truly put an end to it. And it would not make sense if we didn't finish this with you and what you always love to do. Let's finish it out on a prayer, brother. Yes, sir. Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for this day. We thank you, Father, for this podcast, allowing us to talk and speak to many out there, Father. We know that none of this is us, but it's all you, Father. We are instruments that you have blown through us, through us and that your word will be received, Father. We thank you for all that you do and for where you're leading us and taking us, Father. I ask you to continue to watch over us, and I pray for all those that have heard your word and um, that you may heal them and, and take them to where they will be whole and next to you. We pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sammy Barona. Follow him. Yeah, man, this was great. And again, thank you all who continue to support. If you want to show some appreciation, you want to show some love, click the share, tag people in it. Let's get the word out. That's all I got. We'll see you next week, everyone. Peace. Appreciate you. Peace.